It haunts her in her sleep. Beverly, a terrifying presence who wants her soul. Stop it! And will kill anyone who stands in his way. Be together. Always. Now, will his seductive power take possession of Dr. Crusher? I'm leaving Starfleet. Or can she escape his deadly clutches? Come on, Beverly, we've got to get out of here. The next time on Star Trek The Next Generation. <laughs> Hi folks, Mel here, the witch from the Ebonscape. It's now October, and for those who don't know what that little clip was about, you're probably wondering, Star Trek? No, I just wanted to show that little trailer for Sub Rosa, a TNG episode. Sub Rosa has some eerie similarities to the witching hour. The premise of that entire episode was Dr. Beverly Crusher goes to a Scottish colony after her grandmother dies under mysterious circumstances. She inherits her grandmother's heirloom, chiefly a green emerald type necklace that seems to come with, well, a very romantic and very, very intimately friendly ghost. And it gets weird from there on, folks. It gets very weird, <laughs> but well, yeah, it gets very weird. You can watch that episode. I was in bed, but there wasn't another person in my dream. It was more like a presence. You said you felt a touch. A pair of hands. They were moving across my skin. Like a caress? Yes. And there was a voice, a man. He whispered my name. It was as if I knew him. Or more like he knew me. He knew exactly how I liked to be touched. It was the most physical dream I've ever had. And Rice's The Witching Hour has some strong similarities to that episode. And there have been accusations throughout the years. And the show's uh, writer has is on record denying that he ever read The Witching Hour, that he knew anything about The Witching Hour, but many people myself included who read the witching hour before i saw that episode and rises the witching hour Ooh, what is it about perfect halloween october read and rice is such a master storyteller and it's a very thick book as you can see and i started reading this book without even realizing how long it was but i couldn't put it down so the book focuses on the mayfair witches it's actually a trilogy this is the first the witching hour and in fact, it's book one of the Mayfair Chronicles or the Mayfair Witches. And what is it about? So it's about 13 generations of witches, first documented in, in 17th century Scotland at, well, a Mayfair hanging. And this story is, well, it starts out with the doctor telling his story of his run-in with the infamous Mayfair Witches to a man who works for a secret society and this society's aim is to document supernatural phenomena. So the doctor woke up afraid. He had been dreaming of the old house in New Orleans again. He had seen the woman in the rocker. He'd seen the man with the brown eyes. And even now in this quiet hotel room above New York City, he felt the old alarm and disorientation. Hmm. So the Englishman tells him that his name is Aaron Leitner and he'd given the doctor a card with the name of an organization inscribed on it. You might say we collect ghost stories, true ones that is, the Talamasca. We watch and we're always here, the card says. This begins a great narrative. The doctor becomes a key member of the, um, the novel going forward. In fact, he marries the protagonist, Rowan. When we first meet the Mayfair witches, the doctor is doing a house call. Um, he has been tasked to take care of Deidre, or Deidre, who is a young woman with, well, a kind of catatonia. She just doesn't move. Later, we find out why, but it's Deidre's death that triggers Rowan becoming the 13th witch and the subject of 
the witching hour the book is as long as it is because rice does what she does best this is southern gothic at its best it follows all 12 previous witches their life story and documents the way each deals with this mysterious entity called Lasher. So Lasher. Lasher. Oh god, I'm terrible. <laughs> but Lasher is essentially the mysterious entity. Some of the women in the family, and it's very much a, a maternal matriarchal family, they even all use the last name Mayfair, which is maternal. Some of the witches embrace lasher the ones that kind of like you you and i i'm not going to be afraid of you but i'm going to deal with you they fare the best the ones that try to run away are the ones who often fare terribly this story has obviously an old dilapidated gothic mansion in new orleans it has ghosts it has dolls that are made of human bones <laughs> old women it's the type of house people walk by, stare at it and go, ooh, I think I'm going to stay away from that one. No one wants to work there because, well, Lasher. The, there are many people in the story have had encounters with him, including the doctor who starts this story and the terrified ways in which Lasher kind of announces himself. The story centers on 13 generations all the way to the present witch, the 13th witch, because 13 is such a powerful number for witches and covens and everything supernatural and occult. And Rowan is that 13th witch. She's also, she also appears to be the most powerful of the Mayfair witches. And Mayfair witches is a trilogy of gothic supernatural horror fantasy novels by American novelist Anne Rice. We know that. We know that. The books in the trilogy are... The Witching Hour, Lasher, and of course, Taltos. So here are some of the reviews. Susan Ferrara of the New York Times described The Witching Hour as a ghost story about an evil spirit called Lasher who is so permeated with foreboding and evil that themes like abortion and incest are merely secondary. I mean, if you can forget the incest and the abortions and all these other themes because this sinister presence exists, that should tell you something about the writing and the way this, this character um, has been well developed. There is Christian symbolism, straight and skewed, rough sex and necrophilia. Yeah, that's, that's just about accurate. Publishers Weekly wrote that Rice plums a rich vein of witchcraft lore conjuring the decayed antebellum mansion, yes, where incest rule, dolls are made of human bone and hair, and violent storms sweep the skies each time a witch dies, and the power passes on. <laughs> The publication calls Lasher another vast transcontinental saga of witchcraft and demonism in the tradition of gothic melodrama. Mary Sue described a series as half narrative, half exposition of the entire family tree. Yes, I explained that's why it's so long, because it essentially follows 13 generations of witches. Lasher is described as a slim, pale, elegant figure with dark eyes and dark hair and a hypnotically seductive power over any of the Mayfair witches. Over any of the Mayfairs, reckless enough to entertain him. Pretty much, yeah. If you pull him to you, you will be rewarded and you will probably not live a happy life. Lasher, <laughs> yeah, whom Publishers Weekly describes as a devil seducer spirit, is a demon linked to the Mayfairs for generations. We don't know how long, but he was first documented by a Scottish witch named Susan Mayfair in the 1600s. Lasher goes on to bedevil her descendants down to the present day, seeing in them the means of fulfilling his ghastly and unnatural ambitions. Under Lasher's influence, the Mayfairs become an enormously wealthy family of witches, able to attract and manipulate unseen forces. The demon seduces each new designee and orchestrates incestuous unions among the family with ulterior motives. Rowan is the 13th such Mayfair designee, who Lasher believes will give him his chance to rejoin the living. <laughs> Patrick McGrath suggests that Lasher is actually the protagonist of The Witching Hour. I can agree with that. I can definitely agree with that. 
So that was a little bit about the witching hour. And <laughs> this is definitely my Halloween recommendation, folks. It's Anne Rice. You can't go wrong with Anne Rice. And it has all the great Anne Rice stuff. The religious, the gothic, the old the dilapidated mansions, the great writing, the super sexual stuff. Lasher, Lasher. Um, it's a long novel, but it's worth the read. There has never been a movie based on this, but if you've seen Sub Rosa, <laughs> TNG Sub Rosa, you pretty much get the gist of it. And let me know what you think about Sub Rosa or The Witch in Hour. And I was intrigued throughout this entire novel. If you've read it, let me know what you think. And folks, have a very scary, very fun Halloween.